Greetings and welcome to the third week of Lenten Meditations by the Loudville Clergy. I'm Connie Zare, Pastor of Care and Nurture at Loudville Mennonite Church. In years past, in normal times, the churches would take turns hosting each week and the meditation would be followed by a meal served at lunchtime. The ladies of Loudville Mennonite Church would usually serve soup and sandwiches and cookies. I am afraid this year you will have to take a rain check on that, but hopefully by next year, we will be able to fellowship around a meal together after we have the meditation. I will begin by reading from John chapter three, verses one through 17. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus said, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive, your te receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended from heaven except the one who, ascended, who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved. Will you join me in prayer? God, anything good we receive comes from you. You formed the heavens and the earth. You made us, and we find fullness of life in you. You care for us unconditionally, and you are gracious to us. But we have our own expectations for our lives. We sometimes find ourselves becoming emotional when we don't have these things, or when faced with the possibility of losing them. We lay awake at night worrying, and then we make our own plans and try to accomplish these things on our own. These expectations can often rule our hearts. We choose to believe that they will bring true joy and happiness. We become bitter and envious of others who have what we want. We fixate on our expectations and desires instead of on you, and we let them dictate the decisions we make. We cling so tightly to our expectations that we miss out on the good things you have given us. So thank you for your grace and patience with us. Save us from desires or expectations that keep us from you. Thank you that we have been given the greatest gift in Jesus and that he is enough. In Jesus' name, amen. The theme for today's reflection, in keeping with the larger theme of Lent this year, is giving up expectations. Have you ever truly expected something to come or to happen in a certain way, and instead be forced to say, well, that's not what I expected? 
My wife Nicole and I, about two and a half years ago, discussed if we were content with our family of two boys or if we wanted to have a third child. And we decided that three children sounded nice. A few months later, we went together to Nicole's ultrasound appointment. We were somewhat surprised that the doctor had ordered the ultrasound at six weeks, being that this was our third pregnancy, uh, but went ahead with it as ordered. The technician began with, uh, with some small talk, uh, but then became very focused on what she was looking at and looking for. Nicole began to become a little bit concerned. At one point, it looked like the technician was focusing on uh, one tiny little heart. And Nicole asked, is that their heartbeat? To which the technician replied, one of them. I think our response was, what? what, what? Uh, the technician confirmed indeed that we were having twins. And I remember vividly then afterwards going to the car and Nicole and I just sitting there together, trying to take it all in. We had debated over having three children and now we would have four. We had been through two successful pregnancies and now we were back into the unknown of what a twin pregnancy would be like. We thought we knew what was going to happen but what happened was not at all what we were expecting. Sometimes our expectations are blown out of the water, and sometimes we need to choose to give up our expectations for something different. When Nicodemus, a Pharisee, met with Jesus at night, he had expectations of Jesus. I think it is fair to say that perhaps Nicodemus had already suspended some of his expectations just in wanting to meet with Jesus, the Pharisees mostly rejected Jesus because he threatened their institutions and leadership and didn't fit the bill for who they expected their Messiah to be. Nicodemus says to Jesus, We know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Perhaps Nicodemus was looking for an insider report on how Jesus planned to overthrow the Romans and reestablish the kingdom of Israel. Perhaps he was looking for a new systematic theology to strengthen the role of Jewish law in everyday life and belief. Perhaps he thought Jesus had a brand new teaching on the way of God. Nicodemus suspended some of his expectations in meeting with Jesus, but he didn't expect what Jesus told him. Jesus says that to see the kingdom of God, one must be born from above, or born anew, or born again. This is a spiritual birth. Yet I think we should not just focus on being reborn, but on what it means to be born. When a child is born, they are small, humble, fully dependent on their parents. They are loved, cared for, and protected. They have very little expectation of the world beyond their basic needs being met. And I will never forget when our firstborn, firstborn began to learn that he could move and control his hands. And he would look at his fingers as he moved his hands. And at one point he moved his finger closer and closer and closer until he poked himself right in the eye. I thought for sure that he would pull that away, but no, he poked himself right in the eye. He had no expectation of what his fingers were going to do. He had not yet learned that. And I think as we are born anew in the Spirit, there is an infantile quality that we also take on. Our dependence is on God. We trust God fully for all that we need. We don't have expectations for how everything needs to be, but rather we trust in God that we are loved and cared for and given all that we truly need. Consequently, when we are open to God and to the wind of the Spirit, God leads us beyond what we could expect. Like parents expecting one child and given twins instead, God multiplies his gifts and his love. The spirit is like wind. We cannot expect the wind to blow the way that we think. We hear the wind and we can see what the wind blows, but even with sophisticated weather prediction, we do not know the specifics of what will be moved by the wind or where things will be set down. We cannot expect the Spirit to move always as we would think. Yet, the Spirit does move. God does give, and He does release. 
Now for perhaps the most well-known verse in what was just read, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. This verse challenges us to give up our expectations of God. God will not move in the world in the ways that the world moves. So many of the Jews in the time of Jesus expected a Messiah to raise up the Jewish nation and defeat the Roman imperial rule over their land. They thought in human or worldly means of victory. One side is put down and the other is raised up. Yet God so loved the world, not the Jews, not the pious, not the chosen, God so loved the world, all of the world, that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes may have eternal life. And God did not use the systems of the world to bring this eternal life. God subverted the systems of the world through giving his son the death of his only son. All who believe from all people groups of the world are given life. As we cannot control or expect how the wind of the Spirit will move, we cannot fully expect how God will move. Yet we trust in God. We hope in God because God is faithful and loving and gracious. We must not confuse expectation with hope. We do not give up hope. Hope is grounded in our faith. Expectation is grounded in our desires or what we think should be. But faith, in faith, we trust and hope in God. We have an assurance in God. And as an infant does not even know what their fingers can do, they still trust in their parent to provide all their needs. May we also be willing to give up our expectations of what we think for our life and instead rely more fully on our trustworthy God. Will you join me in the benediction from Ephesians 3, verses 20 and 21? Now to the one who, by the power at work within us, is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ever ask or imagine. To God be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Blessings to you this week. <laughs>